Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is again a privilege and an honor for God allowing us to come out and hear another portion of his word and sing praises to his name. Amen. I would like to thank the brother that came before us to make the service what it is. Thank you for coming out to give God your undivided attention. Amen. Today is our, Brother Keontae, I was at home rehearsing my, my lesson. Every time I got to the introduction, I was there. Today is our Alabama. I said, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Right. Hold on. Let me get right. And I would calm down and I, and I get myself together. Right. I said, good morning, everyone. And I would say, good morning. <laughs> Today is our Alabama. I said, hold on. <laughs> For some reason, that name just <laughs> want to come first. <laughs> so welcome to our Auburn. And Alabama. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Boy, to all I, if I kind of, it, it sounds off. But if I favor this side, it's because when I look, I see a bright color on this side. All right. All right. And if I look to the opposite side, y'all my family and I love you as well. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> But be it as it may, welcome to all my Alabama fans and my Auburn fans. God loves you and we love yeah. you as well. <laughs> it's a day that we can, we can, so to speak, lay aside our dressing attire and come out and just for one, one day represent a team that we love yes. and that we follow, not to the point of that we put God in place of it. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Not that we put God in, not that we put Alabama in front of God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we keep it in its respective place. You better know. Yes. And what I want to do, since it's there, go again. Since it's Auburn and Alabama Day, there you go, what I want to do, I want to look at it from the standpoint of looking at Jesus versus Satan, and it's game time. And I, and I thought about that. I had a different lesson in mind, and then I, I talked with Brother Greg during the week. He and I was going back and forth doing the text. And he asked me, why did I not choose a different speaker? And then he gave me his reasoning why. And I said, I need to change my lesson. I said, what can I change it to? I said, well, it's game day. So let me change it to a, a, a sermon about it's game time. And so as we are going through the Bible, and we're going through the Old Testament, leading us up to the New Testament. But as we look in the world and as we're going through the Old Testament, we see how Satan has been busy on every hand. Yes. Everything that God sets out to do, Satan has been at work to undermine. Amen. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at, just for a short time this morning, we're going to look at it from the aspect of a football game. Okay. We're going to start in the book of Genesis, chapter, chapter 1. And we know God created the heavens and the earth in six days. And when he created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says he saw that everything was good, but that was not a man to till the ground. Amen. And so one of the things you will see in a football game, you will see a team, they would huddle up. They would huddle up and they would come out with their game plan. They would come out with a plan of what they are intending to do. Right. And in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, the Bible reads, and it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over every, did I hit your button? I'm sorry, I did not. It's okay. I can get it from you. Go ahead. Okay. Over the earth and every creeping thing that is upon the earth. And God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, they all came together. And they decided that they was going to make man in their image. Yes. And when you go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 7, the Bible says, And God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Amen. So as they broke the huddle, the plan that they had in the huddle was to create man. Yes. And that plan was created. So now God has created a play field for man to dwell. Go that ahead. was the Garden of Eden. I like that. And he placed, he placed Adam in the Garden of Eden. Yes. Now, the plan is coming to fruition. So now God says, I have to throw the man a pass. Yes. And the pass that he throws the man, he gives him a command. If you turn your, go down to your Bibles, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eateth thou shalt surely die. Yes. So now God has passed on the command, yeah. and Adam is now carrying that command, yes. and he's carrying it to the fullest. 
God said that it's not good Go ahead, brother. that man should be alone. Amen. So God makes him a help me right. to help carry out the plan. Yes. And as, as you watch the football game, as the quarterback throws a pass to the receiver, the receiver catches the ball. Yes. And as he's running down the field, the defender jumps on his back and he swats at the ball, yes. hoping that, the, that the, the receiver will fumble the pass. That's correct. So now we will look at the swat. Yes. Genesis chapter 3. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verses 1. Through five. Come on with it. Genesis chapter three, verses one through five. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Yes. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. But the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, mm -hmm. neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And as you're running down the field, you can see Adam and Eve, they're running with the past, they're running with the command, yes. and they're holding on to the command. Yes. But the only thing Satan wants to know, how, how tight are you holding on to I the command? Amen. So as he talks with Eve, yes. he says, did God say? Did God say? Not to eat of the tree. Not and God Eve God. goes on to tell him what God says. And Satan says to Eve, God knows you're not going to die. That's what he said. So as he swat at the command, Eve says, you know what? I think that's good. And the Bible said when she saw that the tree was good for food. Yes. And it was pleasant to the eye. Pleasant to he the said, eye. and it was desired to make one wise, she did eat. Teach. And she also gave unto her husband with her. Now there goes the fumble. There's the fumble. And now they let go <laughs> of the fun. command. Right. Because now Satan has swatted at the command. Ahead, and man. they weren't holding on to the command. <laughs> now they have fumbled. And Satan has picked up the fumble. Picked it up. And he's, he's returned the fumble for a touchdown. Yeah. Because now Adam and Eve have lost their home in the garden. Yeah. Adam and Eve will no longer have the place that God had designed for them from eternity. Yes. And if you if you want to turn your Bible to Genesis chapter three, we already talked about it, but we're going to we're going to read it again. Genesis chapter three, verses six and seven. Yes. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit and did eat, and gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them was open, and they knew they were naked, and so figs together, and made themselves aprons. Now as Satan scores, drop down to Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, 22 and 24. I do have a reader. He's on standby. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 through 24, and it reads, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, God, the, Lord said, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove man, he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, Cherubim, and the flaming swords which turned every way to keep out of the tree of life. See, the only thing Satan wants... He wants to keep us from having a home with That's God. That's right. Amen. And when Adam and Eve fumbled that command, yes. they lost their home. They lost their Satan home. Satan didn't care about the punishment that he received. No. He didn't care about Adam having to till the ground. No. He didn't care about Eve having pain in her childbirth. No. The only thing he wanted them not to have right. was a home with God. Teach, and brother. church, the only thing Satan wants us to have Teach, man. is he wants us to have a place in hell and forfeit our home with God. Amen. That's why the title of our lesson is, is game time. It's game time. It is game time. Right. Because as we look to the end, to the to next week, we know what the, the game of Alabama and Auburn is coming up. Yes. And as that game approaches, some of us, <laughs> some of us look at that game with hope. Right. Some of us looking at, even though we've won the last two games, you know, there's still a chance. Yes, sir. that Auburn may go out yes, and they may beat Alabama. Correct. There's still a chance. Yes. Because when I look in the beginning of the season, yes. the expectations was we had a coach. Amen. And that coach, he came from, from the West and he had a winning record. Okay. And they brought him down to the Southeastern Conference. And he wanted to bring the old ways of coaching from the West down to the Southeast and it just didn't work. Okay. 
and the expectations that they had at the beginning of the season. As the season went on, you could see the morale of the players that slowly and slowly started dropping. Until the administration knew we have to make a change. Yes. Because what we intended to do is just not working. Okay. So as the season went on, they finally decided, I have to get in a new AD. We're going to hire a new president, and we're firing the coach. Okay. And then they fired that coach that the morale of the team was slowly dropping. And then they looked back, and they said, we have a young man here. Mm -hmm. Not only can we promote him to the interim coach, but this young man used to be at an Auburn alum. Yes. Not only was he an Auburn alum, he was a running back yes. for the, the University of Auburn, the Auburn University. Yes. Not only was he a running back, he was one of the best running backs exactly. of Auburn University. So this young man, he takes over the, the lead of Auburn, and you can slowly see, yes. you can slowly see the morale of the guys, of the team, is now picking up. Yes. Because they know they have someone. Yes. They have someone that have been where they've been. Bring it they on. have experienced what they have experienced. Talk, man. And as as the, as he goes in, he can see the morale of the team is down. I see and he going. says to the team, I need you to believe. Yes. Man. I need you to believe. <laughs> I see and going. as they start looking at the coach, and the coach is believing, and the coach is now he's moving, because the coach knows if you just believe, just believe. we can turn this thing around. Turn around. And then they have a home, they have a game at home. And the whole game sells out. Yes. And they're talking to the coach as he comes out the tongue. Yes. And they're talking with him. How does it feel, coach? And the coach is talking with him. But when he gets to the edge of the tunnel, he forgets the mic because he runs out on the field because he knows, hey, now we believe. We believe. And they go out in the game and they play the game like they have never played before. That's right. And they tell me that it's going down as one of the greatest games in Auburn history. Not because they were a bad team, right. but because the morale that they once had under the previous head coach. That morale is totally gone because now when you look at them, they look like a totally different team. Team. Right. Because they believe. Because under the headship they have now, they know they can walk hand in hand because the person they're walking with have been through everything they have been through. He has been through the lows. He's been through the highs. And he played on the highest level. And now he has came right back to us. Yes. To bring us where he is. All right. Thank God good. Thank God good. Thank God good. But now Satan has destroyed the place that Adam and Eve once had, God said, that's not it. I have an audible. Yes. He said, let me call the audible. Let me call that's it. your scripture reading, Genesis chapter 3. Yes. Verse 15. Let Listen at the audible. Walk us into it. This is what he said. And God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What he said to Satan then, you, you may have cost Adam and Eve their place, yes. but God said, I already had a play in life. Right. God said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring through the woman. I'm going to bring a seed, and you shall bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. In other words, what he's saying, he's saying, yes, you're going to hurt him, but what he's going to do, he's going to destroy everything that you ever set out to do. Church, it's game time. It's game time. Church, it's game time. It's game time. And now that God has set forth the audible, Satan knows. Now I have to find out who this person is, yes. because if I can find out who he is, I can stop this from coming to fruition. Right. So now we right. see the coaching search. Yes. So now we see the coaching search. Right. And God, he blessed Adam and Eve. They have a son named Cain. They have another one named Abel. Yes. Then Satan gets into Cain. He kills Abel. But God said, no, that's not it. Because see, in a football game, you have to have some offensive line. Yes. You gotta have because what the defender is trying to do, they're trying to break through the line so they can get to the quarterback. Right. But what God said, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set some people in place. So even though you kill Adam or even though you kill Abel, I have somebody else in line. Then the Bible says, not only once you killed Abel, he brought forth Seth. He did. Yeah. And when he brought forth Seth, when you follow the line, after he brought forth Seth, who did he bring next? Let's yes. go to the Bible. Amen. Genesis chapter 5, verse 18. Genesis chapter 5, verse 18. After he brought forth Seth, after he brought forth Seth, Seth did the first offensive line. Who's the second offensive line? And the Bible says what? And Jared lived a hundred sixty and two years, and he begat Enoch. So now he has an offensive lineman in line. His name is Seth. Yeah. And when Seth goes off the line, he brings another offensive lineman, and his name is Enoch. Yeah. Then verse 28 and 29 says what? And Lemek lived 180 and two years, and begat a son, and he called his name Noah, and said, This same shall comfort us concerning our works and the toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Do you hear what he says? Mm -hmm. God already have plans in place. Because see, a good coach, 
when the defense throws out a scheme, yes, a coach already have an audible in play. He does. And what he does, he relies on the quarterback that when you look out and you see that they're set up in a certain defense, I'm going to give you the permission. You call the audible. That's and right. God has set the audible. He did. And no matter what Satan is trying to do, God now, because Satan is going out to try to destroy this seed promise. Yes. So God has people in place. So when you destroy this one, God said, I have another one coming yes. along. Yes. 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 So now that Seth was there. Seth goes off the scene. He brings forth Enoch. Through Enoch, he has Methuselah. Through Methuselah, he has those Lamech. And Lamech has a son named Noah. We know about Noah. That's God right. told Noah in 120 years, I want you to tell the people that a flood coming. Yes. Because these people are evil and their thoughts are evil continuously. Yes. And God said, tell them for 120 years. Noah preached for 120 years, told them that the flood was coming. Mm -hmm. I don't have this in my notes, but turn, turn to chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Listen at this. Preach, man. Genesis chapter 8. When you get there, say I'm there. Just read verse 1. Amen. Listen at it. This is very important. And the Bible says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that were with him. Where? In the ark. That were with him in the ark. Mm -hmm. And God made a wind to pass over the earth mm -hmm. and the waters of sage. Mm -hmm. So as God told Noah, I want you to tell everybody that a flood is coming. Yes. I want you to tell them I'm about to send judgment on the earth. Yes. And everybody that wants to avoid judgment, you get in the ark. There you right. go. And God right. said that everybody that was in the ark, they were saved. They were right. saved. Yes. Now, right. as God calls this audible. Called audible. And we see the ark in the Old Testament that's going to save the world. Yes. Right? God called the ark because he knew coming in the New Testament. Amen. There's going to be another ark. Yes. And this ark is going to save the world. And this ark, yes. ark will never be destroyed. Yes. Church, when God calls the ark, yes. mm -hmm. and he set forth the plan. Yes. Let's follow that plan. Let's follow yeah, it because is. it's game time. It's game time. And Satan yeah. knows. Right, Satan is on the lookout. He's looking right now in the Old Testament. He's looking for this seed promise. Yes, he, he is. His intentions is to stop the seed promise from coming. But now Noah is on the scene. Yes. And then Noah goes on. Noah get ready to die. Noah has three sons, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Yes. And now that he has Ham, Sham, and Japheth, and now the flood is coming up on the scene, they all get into the ark. Yes. And after the flood, the waters are saved, they get off the ark. Now the seed is in, in, the, in the bloodline of Shem. Yes. Shem goes on in his bloodline. He has a man by the name of Terah. That's and right. And Terah goes on to have a man by the name of Abram. You know who Abram is. That's correct. God blessed him and called him the father of yep. many nations. That's, That's correct. Right. God, Abram goes on to have two children. Yes, he does. Because he sits and he looks and he said, God, I'm not going to have anyone to be my heir. And God said, you will. Mm -hmm. He said, you will. He sent two men to tell, to tell Abraham right. that your wife is going to conceive. Mm -hmm. And he's like, how can I conceive? And I'm old. Mm -hmm. And my wife is old. Mm -hmm. And when Sarah heard it, the Bible says she laughed. Yep. She laughed. And God said, is there anything too hard for God? Teach, brother. See, when we know the God we serve, right. mm -hmm. no matter what Satan throws at us, mm -hmm. says, Satan, mm -hmm. it's game time, baby. It's game time. Yeah. It's game time, baby. Right. Because, see, I don't have to worry about what you're throwing because my God has already said the audible. My God has already called the audible. And that audible he called is the best audible that you could ever have. Preach, right. man. And so now, Abraham and Sarah, they have their children, mm -hmm. one by a bond woman, and another one he has by Sarah, yes. and his name was Isaac. And we know how that goes. Isaac has two children, Esau mm -hmm. and Jacob. That's correct. And Esau sells his birthright, and we know the rest of the story. As, as the father says to Esau, I want you to go out, I want you to make me some of that venison. Yes. And the Rebecca, she loved Jacob. And so she dresses Jacob up to feel like Esau. And she brings uh, Isaac some of the venison. And Isaac says, how did you get back so fast? Yes. And Jacob starts talking. And Isaac says, the voice sounds like Jacob. But when he started, there's something about a mother. She knows how to take care of her children. But you have to see the hand of God in all of this. Yes. Right? Because God has said that a seed was coming. Yes. And if God doesn't allow that seed to come through Jacob because Satan is going to destroy him, you and I don't have hope. We don't have any hope. But now that he has blessed, he blessed Jacob with what Esau was supposed to have, they, they come in conflict with the other. Jacob takes off. 
Jacob meets God at the brook, and he sees these angels going up and down the ladders. And he grabs, in Genesis 32, if you want to know where I am, so he grabs on to one of the angels, and the angel says, let me go, because daytime coming. And Jacob says, I won't let you go until you bless me. That's right. And the angel says, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, no longer will you be called Jacob, but you will be called Israel. Right. And there we have the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel goes on to have children. Yes. One by the name of Judah. Yes. Right. And as you're reading the story of Joseph, Joseph gets sold down into Egypt. Yes, sir. And as he's sold down into Egypt in Genesis 38, it tells you about Judah. That's correct. Judah has three children. And he, he sets out for the oldest boy named Ur. He sets out and, and, and gets him a wife by the name of Tamar. Yes. Ur dies. One of the children was evil in the sight of God. God destroyed him. Yeah, yeah. So Onan was supposed to go in and lay seed for his brother. That's correct. He did not do it. He went in and enjoyed the pleasure, mm -hmm. but he did not follow through with yeah, the plan. Yeah, so yeah. God killed him. Mm -hmm. So she knew that the youngest is supposed to be my husband. That's correct. So Judah says, if you just wait, I will bring my younger. But Judah didn't, Judah didn't hold through with the promise. He did not. So as he was going up to the sheep shears, she finds out that he's going, so she dresses in some harlot clothes. Watch God. He dresses in some harlot clothes. And as, as he's on the way, he sees this harlot. Yes. And he wants to go in with the harlot. Yes. And as he goes in, she said, what will you give me? And he gives him a staff, some signet ring, and some other things. He goes in and he lays with her. Right. Now, he don't want this to be known, so he tells the young man, hey, you take this back because and pay, and pay this harlot. But they go back and they can't find it. Right. And then he gets word that your daughter-in-law has been unfaithful. And he said, I want you to take it, I want you to burn it, and I want you to kill him. But she says, this is the man. That's right. This is the man of whom I laid with. That's right. Jesus. And when she saw the collateral, when he saw the collateral that he gave, right. he said, she has been more righteous yep. than I have. Uh -huh. But God knew Jesus has to come through the line of Judah. All right. So now that he have laid with Tamar, yes. they have two children. One of them by the name of Perez, meet me in Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. When you get there, say, I'm there. I'm there. Starting at verse 1. And the Bible says, the book, the, the book of the generation of Jesus, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judas and his brother. And Judas begot Perez. There he is. Z and, and Zara of Tamar. Perez begot Ezram. Ezram begot Aram. And Aram begot Aminadab. And Aminadab begot Naasim. Naasim begot Salmon. And Salmon begot Boaz of Rechab. And Boaz of Obed begot Ruth. And Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king. And David the king begot Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. And Solomon begot Rehoboam. And Rehoboam begot Abiah. And Abiah begot Asa. Now what I want you to do, I want you to drop down to verse 11. And Josiah begot Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away into Babylon. And after they were brought into Babylon, Jeconias begot Zelithel, and Zelithel begot Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begot Abayu, and Abayu begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azar, and Azar begot Zodek, and Zodek begot Achim, and Achim begot Eli Eliud, and Eliud begot Eleazar, and Eleazar begot Mathen, and Mathen begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph of Mary. Whom was also born, Jesus, called the Christ. Yes. It's game time. It's game time. Right. Now that Christ is on the scene. We found the coach. It's now game time. Because now the coach, the coaching search is now over. Yes. Because we went through all the people and they just couldn't qualify. That's right. And now that Christ has come on the scene. Yes, sir. God says now. It's game time. It's game time. It's no longer time. Satan, you don't have to worry about My who time. he is. Because there is an anointed one. Yes, sir. You've been looking for him. Right. And here he comes. Now the Bible says, turn your Bible to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Starting at verse 1. Everybody there? Yes. yes. And the book says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was 
was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So God said, John told, tells us in the creation that in the beginning was the Word. Yes. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Amen. So now Christ is up in heaven, and he's seeing all the scheme that Satan is giving out. Yes. He's sitting, and he's patient and watching it, because he knows there's going to come a time when everybody that God tries is not going to work. Even the blood, blood of bulls and goats are not going to work. And it's going to come a time that you're going to need someone that's, that's right. going to break the holes of Satan. Preach. And now that he's on the scene, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 4, and the word became flesh and it said that he dwelled among us and we beheld his glory as the, as, as the only begotten of the father now that Christ has left his place in heaven preach he has now came in the flesh because the coaching search is now over and now that he's on the scene Matthew 1 18 verse, verses 18 through 25 and the book says now that the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she found out she was with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put, put her away privily. But, but while he thought of on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for, which, for that which is conceived her is the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from sin. Now all this was done that it might fulfill which was spoken by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Amen. So now the play is set in motion. It's, it's in motion. And Joseph wakes up and he, he finds out that his wife is now pregnant. And Joseph wants to put his wife away. And God said, just follow the play. That's right. Just follow the play. I remember sometime when I was when I was the head captain of my team. Yes. And the coach would call the play. And sometimes in my mind, the play just wasn't going to work. So coach, even though you're calling the play, I would run something different. And I did. I ran something different. Uh-huh. And a lot of times what I ran different didn't work because I didn't stick with the play. Okay. And God is telling Joseph, don't put her away. Don't pull her away because the child she has is from the Holy Spirit. Yes. So once God has confirmed it, Joseph carried out the plan. And when he carried out the plan, they had this boy and his name was Jesus. Yes. And here comes Satan again. Yes. So now that Herod is on the scene and yes. Jesus is now born. Jesus. Satan have it. Herod has three wise men. We say three, but has wise men. And he said, go find out where he is because I want to come worship him. That's what and that is not what Satan wants, church. Mm -hmm. Satan will tell you things that sound good yes. right. with the intentions of Amen. doing harm to you later right. on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but when you know the God that you serve, you can say, Satan, it's game time, baby. It's game time. Because I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But it's game time. Mm -hmm. Because I knew when I was going into the game, I knew my opponent. I knew what they was going to do, but I, not only did I know what they was going to do, I knew what I was capable of. That's the key. Because, see, I had put in work beforehand. That's the key. When Christ was sitting up in heaven, he's watching everything that Satan does. He's traveling through the Old Testament with his, with his family. He's seeing everything. He's doing everything for them, but he's watching them complain because they're forgetting who they're serving. He's watching them serve other gods because they're forgetting the one they're supposed to be with. Teach, but now he comes on the scene, and now here he is. And, and Herod says, find out. And as the wise men, they go, they follow the star. They go find out. This is the son. They give him all the rewards. And as they're heading back, God said, don't go the way you came. That's correct. Because what's, what Herod told you, that's not what he's intending to do. Exactly. He's intending to kill him. So right. God says, Joseph, what I want you to do, you take my boy, you go into Egypt until you hear word that the king is dead. That's so correct. now jo Joseph is following the play. He goes down into Egypt. And then word comes back that now Herod is dead. God said, now you can go back. But on the way back, Joseph knows, hold on. Archelaus is on the scene. Right. He's 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 following the bloodline of his father. Right. Then God says, "Don't go that way. Go to Galilee." Right. So I can fulfill the promise and call my son out of Galilee. So now God calls him out of Galilee, and he prepares 
as he calls his son, and his son is growing up in age, he prepares a young man. He does. By the name of John the Baptist. Yes, he does. He said, I want you to go before the man. This is the full man. Right. I want you to go before him. <laughs> I want you to go before him. Go ahead. I want you to prepare the way. And any good running back that has a good full man, oh, boy. when the ball is handed off, you they're going to be patient. Yes. Because they're going to wait. Because as that full back clears that block, then he can make the move where he needs to go. Right. And God said, I want you to go before him. I want you to prepare the way. Yes. And John says, I didn't know who he was. Right. I remember in the Bible when Mary and Martha was going to meet each other. Elizabeth, I'm sorry. When Mary and Elizabeth was going to meet each other. The Bible says when Mary walked in the house. Yes. And she greeted Elizabeth. Yes. The baby yes. leaped in his womb because he knew. He knew. It's game time, baby. Yes, sir. He knew. He knew. It's game time. Right. He knew what was in Mary's womb. Yeah. He knew that the Savior of the world was there. Right. So when he comes out and they asked him, are you the Christ? He said, I'm not the Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, but I come before him. I come before him. He said, but the one that's coming after me, I'm not even worthy to latch his shoes. Meet me in Matthew chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Meet me in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. John is at Jordan, and he's baptizing people. But then he looks down the road, and he sees someone. And he sees someone afar off. Yes. And he looks, mm -hmm. and he knows that this is him. This is the man. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17 says what? Then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to baptize thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it be, for thus it become to us to fulfill all righteousness, all righteousness, and then suffer him. And Jesus, when he was when he was baptized, went up straight straightway out of the water and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. There's no more hide out of all the people you baptized. That's correct. There's nothing like him. Nothing like Because when John saw him, he said, this is the man this is that's going to take away the sins of the world. When Amen. Mary had him and she went and talked to a man named Simeon, right. the Bible says Simeon wasn't going to die right. until he saw salvation. <laughs> right. And when Mary walked up to him oh, man. and she oh. put him in his arms, Come on with he said, I can die now. I can. All right. He said, because <laughs> this boy, he said he's going to be the rise and the fall Amen. of many nations yes. because he knew it's game time. It's game time. Satan, you done ran as much as you want to run. Yeah. Right. You've caused all the problems you want to cause. Yes. But now Christ is on the scene. He's on the scene. And it's now game time. It's game time. Yeah. And now that he has baptized, Jesus has been baptized by John. God said, this is my beloved son. Yes. Sir. In whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. Watch what John says. John chapter 3 verse 30. Watch what he says. He's passing off the torch. He must increase, but he must increase, but I must decrease. Because they want to know, John, are you the Christ? He said, no. He said, I'm not the Christ, but I'll tell you what. It's time for me to get off the scene. Because all I was supposed to be doing, I was just preparing the way for him. Yes, sir. And now that the way is prepared, <laughs> I'm moving on. Right. And now Christ is on the scene. Yes, sir. And immediately he goes into the wilderness. Matthew chapter 4, watch the broken tackles. Yes. Because now he has the handoff. <laughs> Matthew chapter 4. 1 through 11, and the book says, Then was Jesus led up into the spirit, into the wilderness, to be tempted by the devil. Go ahead, And man. when he had forced, fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards in, in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, and he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made to If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be turned to bread. And now Jesus has it, and he's running. And now Satan is swatting at the ball. Yes, but Jesus is. is holding on. And Satan is holding on for dear life. Watch it break the tackle. What did the next verse say? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live alone by live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So now he tried to tackle him, but he uses the word of God to word or ward off Satan. And Satan not through with him yet. No. Because now comes another one. He's hanging on to Jesus. Yes. What does he say next? Then the devil taken him up into the holy city and seated him upon a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For what is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou dash their foot against the stone. Now I can see Jesus running. And he's in the garden. Or he's in the wilderness. And Satan is just holding on for dear life. And he's dragging. Yes, and you know dragging. when you have a good running back, yes, one sir. man can't take you, you down. You can't bring him down. So one man and one devil done jumped on him. And then the next devil jumped on him. And he said that the Lord thy God, the only one you're going to obey. Don't tempt him. Right. Then Satan says what? Jesus said unto him, it is not, again, it is not written that, the, excuse me. That thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil take him unto the sea on the high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto them, All these things I will give unto thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then so, Jesus, pause. There's another tower. Yes. See, when you have a good running back. Yes. You even hear the commentator say it's going to take more, more than one man to bring him down. To bring him right? down. But now that this, now that this running back, now that this coach is on the scene, yes, sir. Nobody can bring him down. Can't bring so him now down. he has broken three tackles and he's still moving. Yes. In basketball and football term, they call it yards after contact. That's correct. So now he's broken one tackle <laughs> ahead, and bro. he's continuing to run. Oh, he's free. broken another tackle and he's continuing to run. He breaks the third tackle and what does the devil do next? Oh. This said Jesus up to him, get thee, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Mm -hmm. Then the devil leaving him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. I tried to tackle him, and no matter what I threw at him, I just couldn't bring him down. Bring him so down. what I gotta do, I gotta let him go because I can't hold him. And as soon as he broke all the tackles, the Bible said the angel came and ministered unto him. Right. Yes. And then he's walking down the road in Matthew chapter 16. Yes. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Now that he's broken the tackle, and he knows Satan is not going to rest, now he's walking down the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and the book says what? And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am the son of, son of man am? And they said, Some say that they are John the Baptist. Some say, Some Eli Eli Elijah. Elijah. And others, Jeremiah is one of the prophets. Pause. So now that he has broken all the tackles and the disciples see what he's going through, he wants to know now, who do men say that I am? They've been doing a lot of coaching searches. Yes. They've been looking at a lot of coaches. None of them qualified. Right. But who do they say that I am? Yes. Some say that I am uh, Moses. Some say mm -hmm. Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Yes. Then Jesus said, you done saw all the tackles I've broken. You done saw how much Satan came after me. Right. I'm still standing and we're still running. So who do you say that I am? Talk, what man. does he say? He said unto them, but who, but who said, said oh, see. But whom say ye that I am? Verse 16 says, And Simon Peter answered it and said, That thou art the Son of Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for the flesh of flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So he says, Who do you say that I am? Yes. And John said, Peter says, I've seen all the people, and none of them qualified. None of them was the anointed. And you want to know who you are, Christ? I can tell you that you are the anointed one. That's correct. You are the son Amen. of the living That's God. Correct. Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood couldn't tell you this. Because if you listen to that man, they would say some of those other coaches qualified. Yes. But none of those other coaches qualified because my Father in heaven, you received that from my father. Go on and preach, brother. But then he says, but Peter, I'm not going to stop there. This is what I'm going to tell you. Verse 18 says what? And I say also unto thee, there are Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's game time, baby. It's game time. It's game time. Because now he looked in the Old Testament. God, he watched God, he gave orders to Noah. Noah built the ark, and that ark was destroyed. Now he's coming through, and he's coming through, and now he's on the scene, and now Peter and the apostles know who he is. He said, but I want you to know that ark that was in the Old Testament is done away with. But I say unto you, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Church, there you go. there's only one church. There's only one. There's only one church. And there's only one head of that church. That's correct. That when Satan is throwing whatever he is, whatever he's going to throw at us, there is only one church, there's only one coach that can deliver us. That's it, brother. That coach has been through everything that you could possibly go through. Hebrews 4.15. That's correct. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. 
but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. That's him. Church, we have a coach on the line, on our team, on our side now. Yes, we do. All we have to do is listen to that coach. Yes, he's, he's been did. through everything. He has. He's, he's experienced everything. He has. And he wants to know everything. He if does. there's anything you're going through that your coach tells you, lay all your cares on me. That's what the book says. Because I care for you. Yes. yes. And now that he established his church, and if you notice, every time Satan attempt, he tempted him, he would take him up on a high pinnacle. Yes. And when you, when you do your study, Every, all of paganism yes. is always up on high mountains. Mm -hmm. Everything is always up on high mountains. But Jesus, in the midst of all the paganistic right. things going on in the world, he said, I'm going to establish my church. That's what he said. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No matter what Satan throws, mm -hmm. get for me Daniel chapter 7. It ain't, in, it ain't in my lesson, but get for me Daniel chapter Bring 7, it on, brother. verses 13 and 14. When you get there, just start reading. But no matter what Satan throws, because Satan is going to tell you any church will do. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satan is going to tell you it doesn't even matter if you go to church. That's what he'll tell you. And Satan is absolutely right because Satan knows he's not going to heaven. Right. He doesn't intend on going to heaven. Right. He's going to hell and he's right. going to take as many people as he can. Right. Exactly. But if we don't listen to the one that God, when God called the audible, he sent a running back through. And once that, uh, that running back broke through, that running back said, I'm going to establish my church. Mm -hmm. And it is the only church that's going to take us from earth to heaven. That's it, brother. Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14 says what? I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came in the ancients of days, and there brought near near before him, and there was given dominion, and there was he giving him dominion and the glory in the kingdom that all people all, that all people, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is ever is it is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. Do you hear what Daniel says? And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Amen. That he said, I saw in the night vision. He saw <laughs> one like the Son of Man. That's right, brother. Coming before the ancient of days. That's correct. And he came near before him. He said, and that was given to him a kingdom. A kingdom. And dominion. And dominion. In other words, there's one kingdom. That's it. And there's one place he's going to rule. That's it. And then he said in that one kingdom and that one place, mm. all nations. Yes, sir. All languages. All of them. Shall go in and they're going to follow him. He said his kingdom will never be, be destroyed. That's the book. And you see the fulfillment in that. That's when right. Jesus says, mm -hmm. upon this rock. There you go. I will build my church. My church. That's the right. book. And if you want to fight off Satan. You get on God's team. Amen. Because in this world, it's Jesus versus Satan. It is. Yes. And who are you going to follow? Because it's game time. Now. It's game time. Yes. It's time to pledge your allegiance. Yes. Because God wants to know, are you on my side? You're either with me or you against me. Because I have put things in place. I have put people in place. I have set a kingdom up. And that kingdom will not be destroyed regardless of what Satan does. Now, as the running back has done all of that running. And he's breaking all of the tackles. It's not over until he scores the touchdown. If you will, meet me in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 5 and 7. Because as we're turning there, what Satan did in the garden was something that God never had intentions to happen to man. God never intended for man to die. But once Satan came in and broke up the past and man fumbled, yes. now death is on the scene. In other words, there's a separation of God that's now happening because of Satan and because of man that's right, not right. holding to God's will. That's right. God has said after he broke, through, broke all the tackles, I'm going to build my church yes. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5 says what? And Moses barely was faithful in all of his house as a servant, for as a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son of his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast in confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, to this day, if you would hear my voice, harden not your hearts, as in, the, as in provocation in a day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works for 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do all ear in their ways, and they have not known my ways. Pause. So, 
So now we see the Hebrew writer tells us that Christ has built his house now. Yep. That house is in existence. And that house is the only one that's going to keep us from being separated from God. That's correct. Now, we're all going to have physical death. Right. But the physical death is not what God is concerned with. What that's God correct, is concerned brother. with, where is your soul going to go right. after we, after we right. finish on this right. side of life? Right. And the only way that we can score the touchdown, mm -hmm. we have to get in Christ's church. Mm -hmm. And once you get in Christ's church, all of the things that you have been dealing with, when you think about the Old Testament, they would have sin that would come back every year. Every year. And that same sin that they would commit, it would always condemn them. But now that the running back has broken through, and now that the head coach is on the scene, get for the Romans chapter 8, verse 1, and we're coming to the end. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Listen to what it says, because now is game time. And now if you are a member of Christ's church, if you are a part of his body, and if you hold on to the commands that he give us, listen to what Romans says. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sin, sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of, of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So now we look at, when we look at the Old Testament, we see everything they was going through, but there was always condemnation because those sins was always coming back. That's correct. But now that Christ has came on the scene and he has broken the strongholds of the devil, the Bible says there is now therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Listen to what it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is in Christ. Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. In other words, they was following a law that could never save them. Right. And now God called the audible. And he sent the one and only true Savior. And go. now, therefore, there is no condemnation. The law was too weak right. to right. get rid of the strongholds of Satan. Right. That's correct. But what God did, mm -hmm. he sent his son. He did. In the likeness of sinful flesh. <laughs> That he will condemn sin in the flesh. That's right. And the law of death had no more dominion over us. Thank you, And Jesus. now I can see, when I look back and you see Jesus, as he breaks down the tackles, and God said in the scripture reading that you were going to bruise his heel. Yes. I can see the bruising that he did when he took him to the cross. Mm -hmm. And he nailed his hands. Yes. And he nailed his feet together. Yes, sir. And he never said a mumbling word. Mm -hmm. But they took him down off that cross. Mm -hmm. And they put him into Joseph's new tomb. And Satan said, I finally got it. But he watched over the years. He watched people that he have caused death to come upon. And he watched those people lay there. They rotted and they decayed. But this man, <laughs> they laid him in the tomb. And Satan is sitting out, he's looking at him. And he's in the swaddling clothes. Yes, sir. But the clothes. <laughs> They're not dropping. And the body is not decaying. Right. And Satan saying, hold on. It's something wrong. Because out of all the people that I have confounded by death, yes, sir. death ain't touching this man. Right. Something's wrong with it. Come on, man. So Satan, he stands back and he looks at it. Mm -hmm. And then he see, he see a body come out of the swaddling clothes. Yes, sir. And he only proves to him. He's going to tell you how powerful I am. Yes, sir. I'm going to fold a napkin and I'm going to sit him aside. And then he gets up and he sits outside the tomb. And Mary comes down early that Sunday morning, supposing him to be in the tomb. Yes, sir. And she looks in. Mm -hmm. And he's not there. That's right. He's not there. Because when you have a Savior. Yes, sir. That can break the strongholds of Satan. Satan can't hold them, church. That's yes. correct. And I want you to know, church, that's the Savior that we serve. Yes, yes. It it's game time. Baby. It's game. Yeah. It's game time. If Satan can, if, if if Jesus can break the strongholds of Satan, why can't we? Talk. Why can't we? Yeah. Talk. When Satan thought that I can kill him and I can lay him in a grave, and and, and if he stay there long enough, that all the disciples they're gonna forsake him. But he looked. He said, I just can't hold him. It's something about this man. It's something about him. I just can't hold him. No, sir. He said, I tried to hold him when he was alive. Yes. And now I'm trying to hold him when he's dead. 
And Martha comes and says, I'm looking for him. And the man outside, why are you looking for the living? Hmm. Among the dead. Among the dead. Church, brother. Church, when Satan thought that he had him, God said, I'm just, I'm just only allowing you to carry out the plan. Yes. Because I know what I have to do. I have to destroy death. Yes. I have to destroy death. And on a Sunday morning when he got up. Yes, he did. And, and the women went back and told He's not there. He's not there. <laughs> the Bible said James and Peter, John and Peter, they ran because they just couldn't believe it. He got up. And when they looked in, then they believed the scriptures. That's what the book says. If you kill me, if you destroy this body in three days, hey, I'm going to raise it up. Yes, right sir. Here. Church, it's game time. It's game yeah. time. It's game time. Yeah. Yeah. God knows everything Satan's going to throw. Yes, sir. He has defeated everything Satan going to throw. Yes. All we have to do is put our hands in the hand Stand of a man that can calm the war. I declare. Yeah. Put your hands in the hand of a man when Martha said, Jesus, if you would have been here, he wouldn't be dead. They say it's four days. He's thinking now. And Jesus knew. I often wondered, I said, now, why did he wait for four days? There you go. Why did he wait for four days? Because, see, in that custom, what they believed was you have at least three days because mm -hmm. the spirit's going to stay by the body. Yes. But God wants to show you the type of God he serves. Yes. When they told him Lazarus was dead, he, st he still stayed. He waited. Right. He waited for four days. Right. Now, he have all the people around mm -hmm. in unbelief mm -hmm. because even the one that was familiar with him said if you was been here, yes. he wouldn't have died. Yes. Right. Jesus turned to the Father. Yes, he did. He said, Father, I don't do this for me. That's right. But I do it so they can believe. Yes. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Come forth. Mm -hmm. And that same God. That same God. That same had God. power to bring Lazarus back from the dead. Yes, same, sir. Is that same God. Same, same God, God. That when Satan is throwing whatever he wants to throw at you, oh, yes. he has the power to deliver you. Yes. And you may not make it on this side of life, church. Right. But what he has power to do, teach, to keep your soul. Yes. So when God says, go back and get my church, yes. he can make sure that you are part of that church without spot, Talk. without wrinkle, Talk. and any such blemish. And we can walk in heaven hand in hand singing, yes. I love my Savior too. Yes. Yes. If so, there is anyone that has not accepted the gospel, yes. so, you can do so by hearing, believing, repenting, and confessing, and being baptized. Give God your hand. Oh, give me your hand and give God your heart. Let us see.